versus NP. Can every problem that can be checked quickly can be solved quickly? The P in this statement means polynomial time and NP means non-polynomial time. To put it much more simply, P means easy puzzles that are easy to solve and easy to check, like a sheet of addition problems. NP represent much harder problems, like a tricky riddle or a giant jigsaw puzzle. But if someone were to give you the answer, you would immediately know if it's right or not. So the million dollar question is, no, I'm actually serious. The Clay Mathematics Institute is offering one million dollars to solve this. Are these two types of puzzles the same? If they are the same, or P equals NP, then every tricky or difficult puzzle there is has an easy way to solve it. We just haven't found it yet. But if P does not equal NP, then some puzzles are just going to be hard no matter what. This matters because if P equals NP, then we could solve some of the hardest problems in existence really fast. We could crack every security code on planet Earth, figure out room temperature superconductors, allowing us to create devices with almost infinite battery life, or even curing diseases. Is there a secret method to solve a jigsaw puzzle with 100 billion pieces in an efficient and easy way? If you find the answer, it may make you a millionaire. Traveling salesman. Imagine you are a salesman and you must go to five houses, but you must visit every house once, end up back home, and figure out the shortest path possible. You could try this, or this, or this path, but with only five houses, that leaves about 24 possible paths you can take. But what about a thousand houses, or 10 million houses? Even the fastest computers in the world would take millions of years just to brute force a password like this. Imagine how long it would take just to find the shortest path between so many locations. This question has implications in GPS routing or being able to design faster chips. The main question is, is there a secret shortcut to always find the fastest possible route or is it just a problem that is impossible to solve quickly? The natural language understanding problem. Can a computer really understand a language? Imagine you're talking to a robot and you say, I went to the bank today. The robot thinks, do you mean money bank or river bank? Or think about when you're talking to ChatGPT or Claude, which by the way, I see the comments. Some of you guys think I'm AI. I'm not, okay? I, 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 I don't know how to explain. I'm not. I'm a real person. I'm here. Hello. This is, this is my voice. Hello. Like, I feel like you're stripping my humanity from me. Like, I, I'm a real person with emotions and feelings and I don't feel that it's okay. Can computers really understand what words mean or are they just going by algorithms on what to say next based on training data? To really get at what I'm talking about, there is a thought experiment in philosophy called the Chinese room. Imagine a person who only knows English in a room. In the room, there are books of instructions and rules of syntax that tell them how to organize Chinese characters in order to write them on a paper and pass them outside the room. Now, outside the room is a native Chinese speaker. This person writes questions in Chinese, passes them through the door of the room, and receives answers back in Chinese, thereby being able to communicate perfectly back and forth. From the point of view of the native Chinese speaker, the person inside the room is fluent in the language. But in actuality, the person inside the room doesn't know a lick of Chinese. They're just following the rules of writing the language without any real understanding or knowing what it all means. Language is pretty complicated. It involves syntax or rules, semantics or meaning, and even pragmatics or meaning and context. Where and how words even get their meaning is often a topic of debate. If even two people who say the exact same word with the exact same definition and in the exact same context can be thinking of two totally different things, then how can computers get true understanding of language and not just simply follow a set of rules that they're given? You know, maybe you actually mean go duck yourself. Byzantine fault tolerance at scale. All right, I, I, I know that sounded crazy. <laughs> I'll explain it as simply as I can. This is a problem about reaching consensus among computers. Imagine a castle with 100 guards, the castle being the network and the guards being the computers. In order for any action to be done, they all have to agree on important decisions. When to open the gates or allow bank transactions or when to sound the alarm, meaning block a hacker. However, there is an issue. There may be an imposter among us. Computers can give faulty directions, be compromised by another computer, 
computer, or just be offline, meaning it ignores commands. Reaching smooth consensus with 10 computers might be simple, but what about consensus with millions of computers? This would create a really complicated game of telephone, and sussing out the imposter might slow down a system to be unusable. So the question is, how do you create a network that can reach consensus that doesn't get compromised and works fast at scale? The biggest domains of this question are in blockchain technology and air traffic control, the efficient genome assembly problem. Although it may seem like it has nothing to do with computer science, this falls into the category of computational biology and bioinformatics. But first, I have to explain what a genome is. Imagine your body's instruction manual is written in tiny DNA building blocks, and they're marked with the letters A, T, C, and G. Your genome is 3 billion letters long. That's like having a Lego tower taller than Mount Everest. The problem is scientists can read DNA, but only in tiny 100-letter snippets. But imagine if you had a jigsaw puzzle, and you had to put it together as fast as possible with not a single mistake. Oh, and it's a puzzle with 30 million pieces. Also adding to the fact that sometimes DNA sequences repeat, figuring out how to put it all together can take years to do. To really grasp how hard of a problem it is for computers, imagine if you were given the Bible ripped into billions of pieces, and you were tasked to put it back together again, except there would be no page numbers to guide you, you had no prior knowledge of what the Bible was, and you couldn't look it up, and every hour you took would lose you $100 from your bank account. If this issue were solved, computers would be able to fix DNA mistakes caused by diseases like cancer, or even bring back extinct animals and make custom organisms like microbes that can clean pollution. So can you solve the genome assembly problem? If you can, you'll get a Nobel Prize. AI alignment problem. You have your AI buddy. It can solve hard math problems, help you with your homework, teach you how to code. But what if you ask the AI, I want you to make everyone happy? Uh oh, we might have a problem here. How would the AI go about doing this? Does it give everyone their favorite piece of candy, tickle everyone, and forcing them to laugh, or something even more extreme, like taking over the world, strapping everyone down, sedating them, and pumping their brain full of a drug that provides euphoric experiences forever? You see, the thing is, computers are known for being too literal. Anyone with coding experience would know this. So they may have issues dealing with complex topics such as what it means to be happy, Scientists want to make sure that AI aligns with human values. This means it does what we want and not just what we say. That it doesn't turn the entire world into paperclips. Yes, this is an actual real concern. And that it's able to ask for help if confused and not just make dangerous guesses. So the challenge is how do we build an AI that doesn't act like a tricky genie and be able to deal with ethics questions such as should you always follow traffic laws even if it means running over a squirrel. Okay, I probably should go into more detail about the AI paperclip thing because it's actually a lot more interesting than you think. Suppose we have a really advanced and extremely intelligent AI that can infinitely gain knowledge and infinitely self-improve, and you just gave it one task, make as many paperclips as possible. As the AI churns out paperclips, it would soon realize that if it were ever shut down, it couldn't make paperclips anymore, thereby not being able to achieve its goal of making as many many paperclips as possible. It would start draining any resource possible in order to keep itself running, no matter what environmental impact it had. It would also soon realize that if a human being were able to shut it off, it would also prevent it from reaching its goal. Also realizing that the human body contains many atoms and elements that can be made into paperclips, the AI would begin killing every single human being on Earth. The AI would also soon realize there are materials in the Earth and maybe even the Earth's core that can be used to make paperclips, so it would fortify itself to withstand extreme conditions and try to use every single atom on the planet in order to make paperclips. The AI would then realize there are elements on other planets that are similar to the ones on Earth. Thereby, by just giving the simple instruction of making paperclips, you have turned a highly intelligent, highly self-aware, and highly resourceful AI into a planet-destroying demigod. This all deals with a very interesting topic called instrument convergence, which I personally think is really fascinating and would probably be worth your time to read about it on your own. Existence
consists of one-way functions. Functions, just like in math, receive an input and give an output. For example, if you put fruit in a juicer, you get juice. The fruit is your input, the juicer would be your function, and the juice would be the output. But a one-way function is like trying to put the juice back into the juicer, expecting to get the original fruit. The question is, do these kinds of mathematical security locks actually exist? If so, then there might be a way to create uncrackable passwords, no matter how powerful or intelligent the computer is. But if they don't exist, then all computer security, no matter how complex, will eventually be breakable. Unique Games Conjecture Imagine you and a friend play a tricky puzzle game in which the instructor gives you a bunch of yes or no questions, but they're all connected in a strange way, and you have to answer the questions so that most of them, like 99%, correspond to a secret rule that the instructor is thinking about. The issue is that if you get even one answer wrong, it can mess up all of the other answers too. Also, you have to figure out the rule that connects all of the questions on your own. The big guess, or conjecture, that scientists think this game is so hard that even if you get an almost perfect score, like a 99%, there is no easy way to get 100%. It's like if you build a 10-story Lego castle, and even if 99% of the pieces fit, if you get one wrong, the entire structure collapses, and rebuilding it takes forever. If the unique game's conjecture is true, then that means there are some problems that are just impossible to solve. The halting problem. Say you have a computer, and you want to know if it's possible to make a program that can tell if another program will eventually stop or run forever. Hypothetically, let's say it is possible to create a program like this, and we're going to put it in a computer with infinite processing power and memory. It's also super intelligent, so it never gets a question wrong. It can take another program as input and tell you if it will eventually quit or run forever. Now, let's put this program inside of another program. Now this new program's job is just to do the opposite of what the first program does. Now all's fine and good, but what would happen if you put the second program as input into the first program? But as soon as you try this, you find out the program crashes. So what happened? Remember, when you fed the second program into the first program, it's supposed to tell whether it will quit or run forever. Then the second program just does the opposite. But if the first program says it'll run forever, the second program will then stop. But if the first program says it will stop, then the second program will run forever, thereby creating a contradiction which caused the program to crash. This proves that there are some problems, no matter how powerful the computer, no matter how much memory, and no matter how intelligent it is, there are some problems that computers will never be able to solve. P versus BPP. Just like the previous P versus NP problem, this goes over two types of problems. P stands for polynomial time, and BPP stands for bounded error probabilistic polynomial time. To put it more simply, P problems or perfect guessers always solve puzzles quickly without any mistakes, like getting a perfect score on an arithmetic test. BPP problems or lucky guessers solve puzzles quickly but sometimes guess on the answers, like correctly calling the flip of a coin 9 out of 10 times. The big question is, does P equal BPP, or are these two types of guessers the same? If so, then luck doesn't matter. Every lucky guesser can be perfect, but if not, then some guessers need randomness to stay fast. Post-quantum cryptography. Imagine you have a safe protected by a special lock that requires really complicated math to open, but with the approach of quantum computing, that password may not be so secure. So we're going to need new and more complex ways of making passwords secure. Some proposed suggestions are lattice puzzles, which is like finding a needle in a 100-dimensional haystack, hash chains, which is like having a treasure map which every step you take, the map scrambles itself, or code-based locks, which is like having an entirely new language that only you and another friend understand. But time is of the essence. We need good scientists to invent quantum-proof security before the bad guys invent quantum computers first. Future passwords, bank info, and video game save files depend on it. Verifying program correctness. Is it possible to know if a program will work perfectly with no bugs without running it? The problem is, some software have millions of lines of code, and even a tiny mistake can cause a catastrophic issue. Aircraft have fallen out of the sky due to misplaced commas, and testing just isn't enough to find all of the issues. Currently, scientists attempt to solve this issue by using special tools to scan code for mistakes, constructing mathematical proofs but for code, or writing code in a way that forces it to be correct. This problem 
is made even harder by the fact that even if code is written correctly, the program can still act in unexpected ways. Even though solving this problem would finally give us games with no day one glitches, its more important uses are for preventing software crashes of airplanes mid-flight and creating hack-proof banks. But as it stands today, there is no foolproof solution. Non-Von Neumann Architectures Von Neumann architectures are the way that many computers are built today. It basically means a computer has these main components, a CPU, memory, RAM, and input-output devices. Although this way of building computers have worked for decades, it does have its disadvantages. A bottleneck on performance due to data being accessed sequentially rather than in parallel, security vulnerabilities, and scalability issues with tasks that need high performance and fast memory. Some potential ideas or non-von Neumann architectures are brain-inspired computers, quantum computers, or optical computers. But the problem is some of these are unbelievably expensive to build. Old software can't work on them, like trying to play a PlayStation game on a Nintendo, and there can be unexpected bugs with quantum bits, as the qubits in quantum computers act weird if you so much as look at them wrong. But if we were to solve these problems, we can have technology that allows 100% accurate weather predictions and phones with a month-long battery life. Quantum PCP Conjecture Imagine you have a thousand Lego pieces, but you don't know if they fit together or not. Then a person gives you a challenge. Prove that you can use 99% of the Lego pieces to build a ship or lose $5,000. But checking every piece individually would take forever. But what if you can spot check three random pieces to get the whole answer? This is the classic PCP theorem. But what if you made it quantum? You have the same problem as before, but now you have Lego pieces that can be two pegs long and three pegs long at the same time. Can you still solve the puzzle by only looking at a few pieces? Or is it impossible? If it is possible, then quantum computers could solve extremely difficult questions and do things like inventing new medicines and curing diseases. But if it's not possible, then that means that quantum problems might be too hard for even quantum computers to solve. Strong AI or AGI. AI is currently good at creating pictures, great at answering questions, getting better at creating videos, phenomenal at chess, and eh at coding. But what about a super AI? An AI that can think creatively, learn anything, and even understand emotion. Our current AI is like a really smart librarian or a really fast jigsaw puzzle solver. But AGI theoretically would have a true understanding of things like love, sadness, and empathy. But is that even possible? The brain is a very complicated organ that we are still figuring out to this day. Could a computer really understand sensory experiences, emotions, implicature in language and communication, and be able to learn without always being given declarative rules? Now this may seem complicated, but these are things that the average 5-year-old can do. Be sure to share this video and thanks for watching.